Uh, okay, so question one. Got uh, three naturally occurring fatty acids there, and it wants me to tell them which one is most likely to be con uh, linked to heart disease and obesity. Okay, well, the one that we would go for is this one there. Um, the reason why is because it's saturated fat. You can see for these two, they've got an ene, so they have got carbon-carbon double bonds, so they are unsaturated, whereas this one has got um, no carbon-carbon double bonds, uh, which we can tell by the name, and therefore that is saturated. Right, so I'm going to uh, write the equation now. Uh, when stearic acid reacts with sodium hydroxide, uh, this is just an acid plus salt reaction, uh, sorry, acid plus uh, alkali reaction, so it's going to give me C17H35COO minus Na plus plus H2O. Okay, so we're going to form a triglyceride from stearic acid. So remember for this one, uh, we start with um, propan 1,2,3-triol. So we've got this going on here, and we're going to form a triester here. So that's my alcohol, and then I'm going to attach to that three... Uh, stearic acids, so that's uh, C17H35 and another one here, C17H35 and finally this one here. Okay, so once the skeletal formula now for trans octadec. 12 enoic acid. So that's telling me, this part is telling me I've got 18 carbons. This bit tells me that on carbon number 12, uh, yeah, I've got a double bond. Now remember, I count the carbons from the carbon of the carboxylic acid. So if that's the first one there, don't take your pen off the paper. So I'm going to try that again. So pop your pen on the paper, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Got a little bit over the page there. Um, and then on this one, I'm going to put my double bond, O and then OH. Um, and then if I count along for the carbons... Uh, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So my double bond would be there. Um, so this is an oddly worded question. It may catch you out. So uh, what do I need to show cis-trans isomerism? Well, not only do I need, obviously, restricted rotation across that double bond, but also I need each carbon atom in the double bond to be attached to two different groups. Um, if, for example, I've got this going on, then it doesn't matter which way these two, because they're both hydrogen atoms. So you must have um, a different group to the H, something like that. Right, so they've given you a polymer and they want me to draw the monomers. So if you have a look for your repeat unit here, you're looking for two monomers. So... Um, uh, there we go, that's going to be, that would be my diamine and that would be my dicarboxylic acid. So I'm going to start with that, C double bond O, then I've got CH2 four times C double bond O. This would then become a dicarboxylic acid. The other one is going to become a diamine CH26, NH2, like so. Uh, the type of condensation component is obviously it is a polyamide uh, because I have got amide groups there. Um, and a use for polyamide is um, fibres in clothing. 
Right, so we've got a synthetic root um, starting from phenylamine. Um, and it wants me to first of all draw ethanoic anhydride. So remember, start by drawing ethanoic acid, like so. And then rather than put the H on, just draw what you just drawn before. So just copy it down. That is ethanoic anhydride. The other products that is produced is uh, um, you'll add in, if you have a look at it, this part there. So what's left over is CH3, C, double bond O, and then that O there, and then the H from the uh, nitrogen there. So it is, of course, ethanoic acid. So nice standard uh, percentage yield uh, calculation now. So uh, they, the only difference is they've given me the percentage yield for this reaction and they want me to calculate the mass of compound A that I can make from it. So first of all, let's work out our moles of phenylamine. So that's three grams divided by the molar mass of phenylamine, which is 93.0. Pop that in your calculator, 0 0.0323, like so. But remember, you only get 61% of that, so you need to get 0 0.0323 times by 0 0.6. That is going to give you 0 0.0197 moles. And then um, to find your mass, it's going to be your number of moles times by your molar mass of compound A, which is 135, and that will give you 2.66 grams. Okay, so hopefully you can see from going from compound A to compound B, I've added a nitro group there. Um, so again, this is a mechanism that I'm sure you have done many, many times. So the first thing, how do I generate my electrophile? Well, you generate it by reacting your two acids together to give you NO2 plus plus H2O plus HSO4 minus. Okay, once you've got that, you can actually react it with compound A, like so. Now you've got NH like so, NO2 plus, okay, and out come the electrons to attack the NO2 uh, group there. That is then going to give you the intermediate. Um, but remember, of course, you've lost that delocalized uh, system there because you've lost two electrons there. So you've now got a positive charge there, an H is attached along with an NO2 group like so. You still have this group there like so. And then the final step will be is the hydrogen atom is lost to give you your product. So that is going to give you like so, NO2, and then NH, like so, um, plus H+, plus. and then last step is that your H+, plus reacts with HSO4- minus to give you H2SO4, uh, hence regenerating your catalyst. Uh, now this is making an azo dye. Azo dyes have actually been removed from the specification now, but let's go through this anyway, just in case you're interested. So, uh, first of all, step one, I'm taking the NH2 group to make this uh, diazonium ion there, which is the N2+. For that, you need to use nitrous acid, which is HNO2, um, and... Uh, it needs to be less than 10 degrees C. Um, that gives me, so I take diazonium ion, do step two. I've got to get to this guy. Uh, so what is going to be the structure of compound C? Well, this you should be able to work out. Um, 
hopefully you can see that this has come from what I've started with. So compound C must be this boy here. So it's that there with a CH3 group there and an OH there. Um, and conditions for that, I need to do it in alkaline conditions. So normally sodium hydroxide conditions. And that is aqueous. So NaOH aqueous, like so. Right, so moving on to question three. I've got to add curly arrows to uh, this first part here for the complete, for the attack rather of hydroxide. So let's do that. So here comes hydroxide, OH minus. Let's put the lone pair on him. That is obviously going to attack the delta plus carbon there, like so. And then this bond is going to go to the oxygen there. So how can I use TLC to identify these amino acids? Well, I would calculate the um, RF value. The RF value is the distance traveled by the spot. So for this one, it would be that distance there, divided by the distance traveled by the solvent to the solvent front. So it's obviously always got to be less than one. And you would do that for both um, of your spots. You could then compare those values with known RF values in the data book to uh, identify the amino acids. Um, why have um, I only got two spots? Well, it could be that two of my amino acids have very similar RF values and therefore they have overlaid each other. So they've moved a similar distance. So uh, given me three amino acids now, um, and it tells me aspartic acid has an electro, electro, isoelectric point rather of 2.77. What do I mean by that? Well, this is a definition you need to know. It's a pH at which, which the amino acid exists as a zitterion. So it now wants me to draw the structure of aspartic acid at high pH. So that means it's at an alkaline conditions. So if it's in alkaline conditions, it would have lost the hydrogen there. And then I've also got the R group there, CH2. And then also this group will be ionized as well. Okay, so now I need to draw this uh, tripeptide. So um, it doesn't matter which order you do it. So let's just do it in aspartic glycine then isoleucine. So here we go. Uh, so it's going to be a tripeptide. So let's draw aspartic acid first. So H2N, then I've got my CH, CH2, COOH like so. That is going to be joined on to the next um, peptide, sorry, the next amino acid. Uh, so let's do glycine, so that's going to be NH, C, H, H, and then C, double bond O, and then finally, last one, N, H, C, and then this is going to be C, H, and then we're going to have um, C, H, 3, and then also CH2, CH3, and then finally COOOH, like so. And then it wants me to mark the chiral centres. Um, your chiral centre is going to be there and there. And I've forgotten to put my little hydrogen there, haven't I? And I've also forgotten that there is a chiral centre. 